I do want to start off with this. You uh, you see the ratings for the college football playoff games? No. So 16.1 million for Bama Cincinnati and 16.5 million for Georgia Michigan and really it's a disaster because those are not exactly higher numbers than what we had for Ohio State Michigan or Alabama Georgia in the SEC Championship game. And it kind of goes to show that you know you do playoff games on a Friday which is still technically a work day, even if it is New Year's Eve. It's still a work day for a lot of people, and it's New Year's Eve. you got a lot of people doing other things aside from watching college football. That's never going to be good. Like, I went back through the numbers. These are the second and third worst-rated playoff semifinals ever. <laughs> well, they were also awful games. Yeah, they were definitely bad, but we, I mean, we've had a lot of blowouts in semifinals anyway, but it's still, uh, it's still pretty bad. It's not too far off course. From other New Year's Eve uh, games, but we have had uh, this is the first time since 2015 that it did not fall also on a Saturday, right? So they've had games on December 29th, December 28th, etc. Uh, but those were at least on Saturdays. Uh, you toss this thing on a weekday, and, <laughs> and it's on New Year's Eve. Uh, that was a recipe for disaster. So it, it was down from last year. Bama Notre Dame last year had 18.9. And Ohio State Clemson last year had 19.1, and both of those actually rated better because they were on New Year's Day than the national championship game did. So we'll see what goes what on would this it, time. What would it take for college football to hand over power to to somebody to be some type of commissioner to make basic decisions about things like this and negotiate these things from a central pers- like perspective? Uh, you'd have to. I don't even know the answer to that question uh, because there are so many different people that have power in this. I, I don't know what the right answer would be. Like, it, but here's it, the thing: none of those people give a damn about it being played on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve or New. Like, they just want to make the most money possible and they just want to have the best event possible. This isn't somebody who gets to pick who's in or who's out or who's out. This is just somebody who's negotiating with the with the TV rights of whoever that may be, whether it be ESPN or Fox in the future or whatever, and, and and be able to actually strong arm some of these individuals to be able to stand firm and say, we are not playing these games on this time or this date or this is how it's going to go. Yeah, I I mean, I'm with you. I just, I don't know. I don't know how they could make that move. Like, I don't know who would have to, show up in charge and say, hey, uh, we will give you all this much money to just sit down and shut up, right? It would have to be an astronomical figure. Well, but here's the problem is you can almost guarantee them if somebody with a brain and a plan would could almost guarantee all the people involved, you'll make more money if we if we just attack this from a logical business perspective. And you guys all stop trying to fight it from an individual perspective. Everybody will make more money. I will get a better TV contract with the playoffs. We'll get bigger ratings with the playoffs because we'll actually use data and analysis to try and figure out the best times to put these games on, the best places to host these games. We'll do all of these types of things, and then we'll go to our TV partners and we'll negotiate those things. And I can assure you, when it's done, the numbers will be substantially higher than they have been, and the product will be better. Yeah. No, I, I don't disagree with you at all. Like, at all. I, I think... Like, like, I'm not it, going to take the, the money away from these people. I'm not, I'm not really going to take any power or influence away from them. I, it's just a bad negotiating tactic to have multiple different people trying to negotiate one thing with, with this committee. Yeah, with the, not with the committee, with with the TV partners, which is right now is only ESPN. Yeah, but I, no. I can assure you that if one person says, "I am now the commissioner of just handling the playoff," you can tell me how many teams are in. I don't even get a say in that, okay? But if you tell me it's four and I got to negotiate three playoff games, when they're going to be held, what time they're going to be held, the locations, all that stuff, I promise you, if you just sit back and let me do it, and you say we wanted to rotate around these six locations. Are these seven locations? Because these bowls are important. But you got to give me power, okay? So when I say the Rose Bowl gets the playoff, all right, 
that then, then they're going to do it when we tell them to do it, or they're not going to do it, or they can take it out of the equation. Like somebody has to have the authority to say, this is when we're going to do this. Sugar Bowl, you're not kicking off at 745, okay? Because that doesn't work for people. We're trying to get the most ratings possible. We're trying to get the most money possible. Now, when it's not a playoff game, you do whatever the hell you want. I just do not care. <laughs> but the year that it rotates in my control, my control, it's going to go at this time on this date. Yeah, I'd, I'd be game for that. I would 100% be game because, for that. Because that's what the numbers say. That's what the analysts say that that is going to get us the biggest piece of this pie. And this is how we're going to promote it. And this is how we're going to push it out to people. This is how we're going to do all these things. One person. I don't care the team. It doesn't matter to me which four teams are in. I know everyone thinks, well, you got to have the big brands or you're not going to pull the biggest numbers. If, if, if you let one person control this, give me four random teams that are major contenders for the playoff every year, and, and I can assure you I'm going to get a big number. Yes. Yes. You're 100% right. 100% right. Uh, I'm, I'm reading here the only semifinals that have been on New Year's Day have drawn over 20 million viewers. No non-New Year's Day playoff game has broken that 20 million mark, and it's unlikely that next year's playoff games are going to close to, or get close to that mark because the Fiesta Bowl and the Peach Bowl are doing it on New Year's Eve again next year. So, well, but, I just assure you that as long as it's on a Saturday, it doesn't have to be New Year's Day. As long as it's done on a Saturday, you can make this thing work. Uh, maybe so. I, I mean, I'm that looking at it. New Year's Day doesn't have anything to do with it. The fact that it's, if as long as I can get it on a Saturday. The fact that it's a New Year's Day doesn't matter. Saturday, let's see, Saturday, December 28th. Ah, excuse me, December 28th of 2019, Clemson and Ohio State did 21.15 million. That was the year that LSU blew out Oklahoma before that, and that was on a yeah, Saturday. But, um, but, that's, but that's a Saturday. I'm telling yeah. you, the day of the week matters. College football played on Saturday. People are habitual people. We're used to habits. I'm used to waking up on Saturdays and watching football. That same for New Year's Day. Right, so very well, much yeah, so. Well, yeah, but 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 if, I don't have to manipulate it to get to New Year's Day. Like like I, if the twenty eighth is a Saturday and New Year's Day is you know whatever that makes New Year's Day, you know the the, <laughs> yeah, the, the following Friday. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. So basically, we just need to have the semifinals on Saturday, no matter what, right? Yeah. Like that's yes. a, whether it's New Year's Day or not, just do it on Saturday. I have to think the championship game should be played on Saturday. Yeah, the tell, tell the Rose Bowl, like, sorry, if y'all want to play in the middle of a playoff game, then or sure. Or you just don't get to it. be a part of the playoff. That's it. You can still have this grand party, and you can still have your parade of roses. Nobody's taking any of that away from you. We're just going to tell you, if you're not going to bend, if you're not going to be flexible at all, then you don't get to be a part of this. Listen, nobody, nobody's inviting the, the Motor City Bowl into the playoff, and they're not all upset about it, so... They yep. get to keep doing what they're doing. You get to keep doing what you're doing, and nobody is any of the wiser. Nobody cares. Now, you got that right. I think the biggest issue right now is ESPN pays like $80 million a year for the Rose Bowl, which is absolutely absurd, right? They, they own the majority of these bowls anyway, but they don't own that one. They just own the TV rights to it, and they pay a, a huge fee. So, of course, they're going to give it a big-time window, and they don't want it to go up against – you know, what they've got going on with the playoff. Now, this next oh, round of fine. negotiations, that, like that'll change. That's, right. that's why one person needs to negotiate this, because I assure you they would rather have a piece of the playoff than just the Rose Bowl. Yes. Now, if you tell them, if you're so stuck on this part of the Rose Bowl, then, then that's great. I, I'm certain Fox would, would love to have the playoff in that spot. Uh, you and then you can go head-to-head head with Fox on a playoff game. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how you do. We'll see how you do.